So here's a different rig. This one is one I use for wobbling baits. You don't see that many people wobbling baits anymore. It's an awful lot of lure fishing, float fishing, that type of thing. Well, this is a great way of using a, a natural bait, but treating it like a lure. So what I do, so use a nice strong size two hook, size six treble, and then a knotless knot on the uh, size two, and then one of our crimp, co crimp covers over the top, and that secures to the lip of the fish with a bait flag, just to stop it coming off on the cast or anything like that, and it adds a little bit of an attractant as well there. Then a size six hook down the back, and that one's just crimped into place. Now, because I keep that quite short, this trace, what it does is it puts just a bit of a curve into the fish. And then when you put that in the water, they spin and they flutter. You can have them straight and they do move a little bit slower, but with that little bit of a kink it makes such a huge difference. Here, I've got, these are what the carp lads use, a bit carpy here, and they use them to counteract their pop-ups. But I actually use them here to give a bit of weight and pull the nose down and uh, rather than crimping on shot like they traditionally used to do onto the onto the trace wire which can weaken the wire um, you, you slide them on using the rubber tubing over the top there so it's much safer and easier as well because you can actually slowly move it along like that so you can actually alter or you can move it up to the nose and you can change how the action of it just by watching it in the margins and you'll, you'll see exactly how it's behaving due to that shot being there but that does make a big difference and then going up to the end anti-tangle sleeve crimped on underneath with a swivel and that's it you don't have a float nothing else at all it's as simple as that tie that onto your main line nice long trace wire just to act in case anything you know the pike was to overshoot the tackle anything like that so good for roving have a pocket full of bait your rod a couple of traces ready made up you can cover lots and lots of ground and then you can obviously just keep working the different layers very very easily to the speed at what they want it on the day really really good underused rig so the lights fade in now we're coming towards the end of the day we've covered the float fishing and we've covered ledgering and the last bit which is the bit hopefully everything builds up to is the bit when you strike and how you set the hooks so we're float fishing which i'm doing now which is why i'm looking at that way a lot i've got the float out there and i'm watching it and it's just slowly bobbing around as it's drifting away in the wind if that float suddenly goes under or starts running across the surface or goes up and lies on its side there's a fish there that fish has got that bait in its mouth close the bail arm wind down till i feel resistance when i feel it heavy all very quickly then I then I lean into it nice and slowly so it's fast reel and then nice and slowly lean into it and that braid it's got no stretch and that set the hooks into that fish if I'm ledgering it's a little bit different you quite often see people holding the braid and they're holding it just in between their fingers just so it can still run freely it's not wrapped around your finger or anything it's just resting over so you can feel it and what you're doing there is you're feeling to see if you've got a bite so it's a little bit different ledger fishing for example, it might not have been a pike taking the bait. It might have been a bream or a carp or, or even a pike swimming through the line and just pulling the drop off indicator off. So actually it wasn't a bite. And if you were to just strike at it, there'd be nothing there. So, you know, it's best to feel for the bite. If you can feel a tap in, like tap, tap, tap on your fingers, that's a pike there and it's turning the bait. Close the bail arm, wind down and strike. If it's just slowly moving across through your fingers, exactly the same, the pike's there, close the bail arm, wind down and strike. So those are the two differences between float fishing and getting a bite and ledgering and getting a bite. Hopefully you'll get a bite. That floats just shot under. Can't see it, so I'm presuming it's moving away from me. We're all really fast. Lean in. There we go. There it is, right under my own feet. Only a little one. Right down here, there we go.
There you go. Got on a little roach, trotted into a reed line where you'd think there'd be a pike hanging about. And sure enough, there was. So that's the simple rigs for float fishing, ledgering, and proofing the pudding that they catch pike. Let's put this one back.